Today we have with us our distinguished speaker, Professor Ram Charan Sir, for an interactive session on leadership during uncertain times. I request Mr. Bose Sir, Director, ASCII, New Delhi Center, to welcome our esteemed guest with a bouquet and memento. Oh, I Thank you. I would request both sir to kindly deliver the welcome address. Thank you, Upadana. Good evening and Namaste. On behalf of Administrative Staff College of India, I welcome you all. Uh, to this interactive session with Professor Ram Charan. I welcome Mr. Ram Charan as a part of this lecture series of ASCII Hyderabad. Uh, we have ASCII Hyderabad, the professors, the board of governors, and uh, the students are connected. A warm welcome to our chairman, Mr. K. Padmanavia, uh, and Director General IC, Mr. Nirmal Lebakshi, who was supposed to come here because of family emergency, could not come. Our esteemed Court of Governors of ASCII, who are also connected virtually, and the professors and students. Here also, I welcome the CMD senior leaders, directors, and I also welcome Mr. Hemang Jani, uh, Secretary, Capacity Building Commission, Government of India, Mr. R.K. Mahapatra, Director HR, IOCL, Mr. D.K. Patel, Director HR, NTPC. ASCII is a non profit, not for profit, public purpose. Uh, premier institution of the country established in 1956 by government of India in partnership with industry. ASCII has reached domain expertise and proven experience in capacity building and research consultancy services. This event is a part of public lecture series organized under the aegis of ASCII Hyderabad and sponsored by NTPC and Indian Oil. So thanks to NTPC and Indian Oil. It's a great privilege to listen to and interact with Mr. Ram. And uh, I wish great learning and fruitful discussion and interactive session this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I will now request our esteemed guest, Mr. Mohopatra, sir, to say a few words. I thought uh, when Professor Ramcharan is there, so you must have some papers with you so that you can't go wrong while speaking. But my my five minutes beforehand has been has been not five minutes more than five minutes has been receiving wealth of knowledge. Thank you very much for these interactions what we had. So Professor Ramcharan, uh, 
my young friend yes yes told i am young i only don't look young i am also young i am on journey my friend uh, uh, sri patel ntpc director chair all the colleagues here of course one and only mr bos thank you very much and all the board of governors and other people who are joining uh, i don't want to stand between you and uh, professor ramcharan today because i am seeing that he is bustling bustling with a lot of energy and uh, and he would like to share that with all of you because if you can take back one good idea today after his deliberations i think that would be enough already i have got a few ideas i have already discussed with him anyway uh, just today i mean this lecture series i must thank uh, mr boss uh, to have kept it on uh, on i mean the leadership during uncertain times i think all of us know during this uh, pandemic how things moved and again i mean i am i'm I'm, I'm, so, i'm so happy that a few people are wearing mask i am also carrying one in my pocket but i am not wearing it right now but uh, uh, nevertheless yeah please please <laughs> thank you sir thank you for coming <laughs> uh, so anyway so how how leadership has but one thing is has responded during this period and let me tell you one thing nothing is unique every organization every institution has has responded completely differently i think there must be and nothing there is nothing though and there is no uniqueness amongst all the decisions which have been taken during this period we have seen that and everybody has gone uh, gone on their own ways and and again that also proves uh, i am trying to take uh, from professor ramcharan that also proves that nothing is right and nothing is wrong so please remember that i think if you have to really go forward in your leadership nothing is right or nothing is wrong you can decide at that point of time where to go so just to uh, conclude my part of it um, i just i have always believed in my three a's i think most of my colleagues who are from indian oil would know i have i have, I have always told these three things have stood me in great stead one a is agility adaptability and alignment i think this probably has stood me in good stead and this this proved more so during the covid period if you are agile if you are able to take steps if you are nimble footed you will prosper you will go forward if you are adaptable to technologies or to whatever decisions are being taken every every day was a different day during that period you are going at the end of the day if you are aligning with the purpose your purpose with the purpose of the business and being a public sector i am very proud that we also align with the purpose of the nation so if you can align this three and you can go forward so that's all my, my friends thank you very much and thank you professor ram charan to be there and uh, looking forward to much association thank you thank you sir i would now request our esteemed guest mr dk patel to say a few words uh, most respected professor ram charan श्री हेमंत हेमंत जानी सेक्रेटरी सी बी सी वी आर प्रिविलेज दैट आवर एम डी पी एफ सी श्री धिलोन साहब जो जॉइंड अस श्री महापात्र साहब डायरेक्टर एच आर आई ओ सी एल ऑल माई कलिग्स कनेक्टेड फिजिकली प्रेजेंट हिर एंड कनेक्टेड डिजिटली आई थिंक आई सम ऑफ कनेक्टेड डिजिटली ऑल्सो फ्रॉम डिफरेंट डिफरेंट प्लेसेस इट इज रियली मैटर ऑफ ग्रेट वे प्रिविलेज एंड प्राइड फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस दैट वी आर वी आर हैविंग द लीडर ऑफ द लीडर normally we listen from leader what is we are having the leader of the leader all of us know is a great author is a advisor of the ceo and what not at least all of us may have, must have gone through at least one one book authored by professor ramcharan so we are really honored sir by your gracious presence and all are eagerly waiting to listen to you we are also i uh, greatly uh, i want to offer my profound thanks to see hemang jani sir also for the, with us to, today you may be knowing many of you may be knowing particularly those who are involved in the learning and development fund he is the man behind the mission karma yogi launched by it uh, with special emphasis from honorable prime minister it is going to be a game changer in the time to come actually in a, although in a very small way ntpc is also trying to uh, um contribute to that and uh, our team is already there sir for uh, preparing many more modules in the time to come i would not uh, like to come between uh, 
me and Professor Ramchandra, all of us are eagerly waiting to listen to him only. But just only one line, sir. Even in, if, if, suppose uh, the uh, SKHA Sujan is a very apt topic, which is quite relevant, particularly those who are in the energy sector and more so in the power, power sector. If you see, sir, although you may be aware, if you see the uh, energy consumption in the country from 2018 to 19 to 1920, there was only, the, the, it was not uh, increased in the rate we had anticipated. And okay, 1920 to uh, 2021, because of COVID, it came down drastically. So there, there, there are a lot of times whether we should phase out the coal, or whether we should phase out the small inefficient units or something. Came 20, 21, 22, there is an unprecedented increase in energy demand, and again from this year, this year also. So it is such an uncertain time. Because within two years, uh, our strategy needs to be realigned or something like that. And uh, definitely all of us will agree that a uh, leader makes the difference. Particularly, the two organizations facing the same uncertainty, the one who has the right uh, competent people having the right leadership, they will survive and they will prosper further. So the, thank you, sir. Thanks again uh, for coming here. And uh, we are again listening to you. Thank you. Sir. Thanks to all. Thank you, sir. I take this privilege to introduce you all to our chief guest, Mr. Heman Rani. Sir is an experienced professional in public policy, governance, and innovation systems. Presently, he is the Secretary of Capacity Building Commission, and he has worked as a senior private sector specialist at the World Bank headquarters in USA. He has also worked with the Government of India as an officer on special duty in the Prime Minister's office. He designed and nurtured Atal Innovation Mission during this time. He is a board member of Atal Innovation Mission and Karam Yogi Bharat SVV. We welcome you, sir, and I invite you to address the gathering. Professor Ramcharan, the DG Nirmalaya ji and the board of ASCII who has joined from away. And of course, Mohapatra Sahib and Patel Sahib and Bose Sahib. As you can see, and Mohapatra Sahib said, I am not only young, but I am also feeling that I am young. So when Bose Sahib came to me and told me that you come for this lecture and the topic is leadership in the crisis, I said, why me? Because I have no leader and I have never hardly handled any crisis in my life so far. So then you all know Bose Sahib, how persistent he can be. He gave me 10 copies of Professor Ram Charan's new book, Talent. And he said, you read this book and then tell me after that, would you like to join? And let me quote from his book. And the very first introduction says, the job of identifying and nurturing high performing executive talent should not be a peripheral corporate function in a silo outside the leadership structure, but a critical partner in creating business success. And that is exactly, essentially, what leadership means to me. Uh, all of us have traveled in trains. Imagine if you are traveling in a train in a S2 or S1 compartment, and if you face a trouble. And of course, through both Sahab and people like Mohotra Sahab, we will all know CBRE chairman and some joint secretary in ministry and even the railway ministers. Can it help? No. All of us have caught hold of the ticket checker or ticket collector in that compartment and made our way. Otherwise, we would not have spent our night. Right? So what the state capacity or in a way the corporate capacity means is its people. And for me, the simple leadership definition is if the lowest customer facing employee imbibes the same values and same structure as a leader, that is the most successful lesson of leadership. And through Mission Karma Yogi, we are also trying to work on the same. Honorable Prime Minister's strong belief that our people, both in all the three sectors actually, the normal citizen, the corporate citizen, and our state civil servants, they all can deliver. That belief is behind Mission Karma Yogi. I'll just end with the simple definition of karma yoga that we understand. I haven't read Gita fully, but I started reading it when I started working on this. And the simple definition of karma yoga that I understood is, let there be no inaction. And all of you, around 80% crowd here is of civil servants. 
all of you are always in some kind of action even today at 6 o'clock you are sitting here not going back to your family on saturday uh, cmd sahab is here he will call you that no 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 we have to deliver this and you will deliver right so civil servants are always 24 by 7 in some kind of action but the essence of karma yoga is how do you enable that action with right knowledge right skill and right attitude so once again i will not stand in between not only eager crowd but eager me to listen to professor ram charan and thank aski for inviting me and giving me this opportunity thank you very much thank you sir so it's my honor to introduce you all to our distinguished speaker professor ram charan who is a best selling author teacher and world renowned advisor to ceos and other business leaders of some of the world's best known companies like toyota bank of america aditya birla group apart from many others his work is often behind the scenes and focus on highly sensitive and faith making issues fortune magazine published a profile of sir in which it called him the most influential consultant so he is the author of close to 40 books four of which were best sellers so we heartily welcome you sir and we look forward to your session yeah. a big round of applause for sir please my job tonight is to operate under those three items suggest some practical ideas that come from my work in the private industry because the whole of my work is in the private industry across the globe and maybe one or two tools will come to your mind that can be useful to you so here i have four major items first one is the leadership heft that means what are the key parts of leadership in the in the uncertainty i'm going to take you through live examples number 2 there are multiple kinds of uncertainty and i'll take you through those three four kinds and drill in for 2023 in india in america in europe in china and then i will take us through what the corporations might consider doing and there will be some practical stuff that i am observing suggesting and putting them into action and then a little bit more drill on how to do the budgeting in 2023 in india so that's my agenda to go forward make sense to you uh please interrupt uh because this is an interactive session i will learn from your questions what's in your mind and that's how i get the fodder to think more 
do some research where we really, really going. So I want to tell you a real happening. Around 1995, there was a company called Roman Haas, chaired by an Indian gentleman, Raj Gupta from Bulansher. Anybody heard of Bulansher? It's in UP. He came from there with some $50 in the pocket, earned his way through, and became chairman CEO. This is the same Indian gentleman who could have been prospering here, just like me doing there. It's a family-owned company largely, and they decided to sell it. So I've been working with DuPont with the chairman, and we talked about it. DuPont decided not to buy it. So all of you heard of a company called Dow Chemical? So Dow Chemical CEO, Australian, Andrew Lewis, decided to buy it for $9 billion. Its market price was around $45. And he bought it for 72. That's the way those things go there. And to do that, his mission was, or his strategy was, to take this commodity company Dow to become a specialty company. So you sell some assets and you buy some assets. So he decided to sell some assets to the government of Kuwait. $9 billion. And he bought Raj Gupta's company for $9 billion roughly. And in the contract, legal contract, it was that unless the government of the United States opposes in the antitrust, it should be closed by January 1. The United States government approved it. Things are going very well. On Christmas day of that year, Kuwaiti government called Mr. Liveris and said, there is no contract. Anybody heard of the word uncertainty? Anybody heard of the word risk? Now there is a panic because if he's not able to annul the contract, Dow could go into bankruptcy. We call that existential uncertainty. So he came to Raj Gupta. Raj Gupta talked to me. He's a friend. I go to his house and they are friends. I'm from Hapur in UP. He's from Bulansher. It's only 20 miles away. We speak the same dialect, the whole thing, same way. And Raj Gupta says, no, there's no way we can break this contract. So Andrew takes this thing to the Delaware court and try to get out of it, and the Delaware court says no. Now, this is existential uncertainty. Doesn't have an answer, what do you do? So I'm gonna take you through what he did, and then I want you to help me crystallize what is the heft of this leader. So this way, you getting the real empirical data and then say, what is it in this man? Because we know the story he did, company survived and did prosper. That's the fact, we know that. So he began to talk to other people in other industries who have actually experienced existential uncertainty open the mind. And he went to the people <clears throat> who could advise, who could give wisdom. But his major objective was to seek options through the eyes of the other. Because he doesn't have the answer. How critical is an open mind and how critical is searching for options however impractical they might be. Eventually, somebody came along and he said, you go to Warren Buffett, dilute your equity, change your goal. Your goal is survival. Your goal is not how much control you have. Shifting a goal in the existence, existential uncertainty, 
is an important item. It happens also all kinds of other uncertainties. Well, Warren Buffett comes in, he takes a chunk of equity, company survives, goes next, merges with DuPont, get a new CEO, cut through three ways, and now all the three are prospering. Now, so let's take a minute. Nobody's going to be embarrassed because you are the leaders. I learned from you. What are the key parts in this leader that made him come out of the death row? What would you say? What comes to mind? Anything. Go. Absolutely. Go out. Visit people. Don't limit to your own country. Because without facing uncertainty, we won't be enjoying the standard of living we do today. It has always been there. We found a way. We actually spurred innovation out of that. We created all this. In the old days, it was natural disasters. Today, a large part of uncertainty is man-made. It is natural, but it's man-made. Somebody somewhere doing something, something happened, and you made a mistake. So that was a very critical item. Somebody give me another one. What is another, another thing? Yeah, please help us. So staying calm and then thinking about yeah, Staying calm. Self-confidence. Ah, situation is uncertain. I am certain we're going to find an answer. How critical that is. Just think about this. I know it's in the videotape. Could you turn this part of the videotape off? Because I don't want to go to the press. I met two people who met the Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. I trust them. One of them is the CEO. Another was one of his ministers. This is the second term. And they both told me within a week, happened to meet them, that the prime minister said, Kya kare? Exact words. Self confidence. What gives self-confidence? Openness, outsourcing, seeking, some kind of a methodology, figuring that out. Is that important? Does it apply to all leaders? Very helpful. Give me some more, please. That's too very helpful. Optimism. Why optimism? Because the world is not dying. world is not dying. My situation is bad. It is going to be somewhere an opportunity. We're going to figure this out. Optimism will find a solution. We found Warren Buffett. And there are more than one Warren Buffett. Pessimism, what happened to the energy? What happened to the, the arteries of thinking? And then what kind of people you surround with? It can't be done, attitude. That's leadership. You're surrounding people who think of options, of ideas, optimism, will find it. It may take a little longer to do that. Three very good items. Give me some more. What else? Yeah, help us. Oh, please, I, I couldn't hear it. Not being rigid with the goals. Not being rigid with the goals. Yeah, not with the rigid with the goals. We've got to change. World is changing. Situation has changed. It happens that way. Collaboration. 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 Huge. Externally. Not just internally. My point is, I can give you a list. Think about what are these, please note the word that I learned from somebody. I don't invent these things. 
observable and verifiable. Is the openness observable in a leader? You can see he's open, he's close mind. Is learning from others observable in a leader? Is deliberately seeking opposite viewpoint observable in a leader? Verifiable in a leader? <clears throat> These are central for leadership. We have companies in India. I'm not here, so I don't know everything here. You will, you will know because you, you're here, you see them. Companies got into existential uncertainty. Think of some companies and they came out. Which companies come to mind in India? Z. Z. Uh, so I was allowed to see one of the family members the other day. They came out. Companies solid. Combined together, Sony and Z together. They came out. GMR came out very difficult. Figure that out. You gotta have calm, poise, peace here, confidence. We'll find it, we'll find it, we'll find a way. Optimism, openness, outsourcing ideas, searching from outside. <laughs> Temperament? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then if you have people around you that way, it is contagious for others to become optimistic. This is not the first time we have existential uncertainty. So I'm going to take you to some more. But my point is, these are internal, these are central, we can improve them, very hard to implant them. Some people have it, and some don't have it. So as you select people for leadership jobs, we should keep in mind that they inspire people, they motivate people. More importantly, they know people's God's gifts and how to nurture those God's gifts. As you know what they are, you know about Sandulkar, you know all these good people. I used to see when I was used to live here, Pandit Ravi Shankar, and they hone it, they do it. If their talent, God's gift, is in the right job, what happens to them? What happened to the people around them? Leaders fit the person's God's gift with the job. One of the things I used to see in Jack Welch, I was with him 23 years, he will restructure the job to fit the person. When a person is in the job that is natural, you don't have to motivate. They like to be treated fairly, obviously, but you don't do artificial ways to motivate somebody. Is that a leader's job? To get the right people in the right pew? Right structure. And that's the number one part because no nation ever built, in my opinion, will never be built without leaders. Leaders in government, leaders in business, Leaders in administrative services, they do different kinds of jobs, different timing, different demands, different ways. So now I take the second point, <clears throat> and that is you have existential, I gave you the extreme example. Then you have the uncertainty where the game is going to change, which I'll give you examples. Another is the buzzword, I don't like to use it, where there's a discontinuity of the whole thing. 
or there is a structural change. Same thing. Then you have the other one, business cycle. You have another one, the macro conditional cycle changing going forward. So the one that I am familiar with, all of you know that. <clears throat> By the way, how many of you have an iPhone? Look at the market share, pretty good. Pretty good. So I've been watching Nokia. Remember Nokia? Used to be number one. <clears throat> number one? And so I'm at the house of the chairman of Nokia in Helsinki. And his premise was, here is Steve Jobs. What is he doing in cell phones when it's the computer company? Think about the thinking about it. What does he know about this? Second, it's high price. It will be a niche like a Rolls Royce. We have the largest market share. We have the scale. We have the brand. We own India. We own China. This, 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 this. What am I telling you about that leader? These are facts. Given the facts, what is in this leader? Sir, sir. Overconfident. Overconfident and misreading. You just have to go and ask four more people outside the industry and say, what do you read? Isn't it? Is that difficult? Openness, you brought that out. Go and ask four more people, your peers, and say, what do you read? What do you see? You know that Nokia disappeared. But who became number two? From Korea, Samsung. They had nothing, nothing, and they moved. And then number two, and who missed the boat? Microsoft, they went into it, took a 12 billion dollar write-off. Arrogant. Game changer, structural change is going to happen in most industries. It has happened before. It's going to happen again. Who creates that? Leaders create that. The people who invent create that. People who have technology who create that. Nations create that. We have this going on as I come back to China a little later. And so we're saying <clears throat> that this game changer part is going to become more frequent. India can go and will go as a game changer and not just game change. Our Indian people are doing that in America. They are game changers. So Penadella, I should tell you his history, how he was selected on preview to it. And now he's moving to the second wave. Just made the changes last week. And here, so, you know what we need to do? We could turn the, the camera down. I'm going to give you some inside information. Here. Yeah. Otherwise, you, you, you,
So my three guys said, he says, well, you know, the CEO is a technology guy too. And then John Thompson looked into his eyes and said, and he says, yeah, that's true, he could, but he doesn't know the industry. And he says, at the end of the day, it is a gut decision. Everybody got it? We now know the results. Uncertainty, leaders, define what con it is. In this case, I said game changer. The structural change, discontinuity. What is the right person in the right job to do that? Including the CEO. Microsoft game was changing very badly. And that's where the committee came down. Am I coming out clearly in this? Yes, sir. These are real stories. We don't publish that. There's no way I'm going to publish. There's a third one. <clears throat> and a third one is the macro economy changing. It's changing now. You know what I mean? The global tension, global economy, inflation, and so on. So what I want you to ponder with me, it, it is important to India. There are six people, not seven, not five, who driving the economic and political change in the world today. And my contention is they will continue to do that for the rest of the year. Which six people, they are human beings just like you and I, they are colluding, they're meeting with each other in some ways. They're calling the shots. They're taking the actions. People from the Western countries and from India are reacting. We're not taking the actions. So who are these six? One, President Xi. No, you are shut the camera, right? <laughs>
I don't have them. They don't have them. I think they're doing a fabulous job. That's me. That's where I come out on it. And I say, yes, support them. Let's go forward. Figure this out. Uh, but I'm not tinkering with that at all going forward. So there you need to have, look into your own operations and say what we need to expect in three years cumulative, every year, three years cumulative. Now here comes a line that I don't like it, but I should mention it. India, so long we grow, we're going to have four to 5% inflation rate for a long time. Prepare it now. Even if I'm wrong and it is better than four or five percent is the good news, take advantage of it, but don't get caught. Am I coming out clearly in this? This applies to you too because your budget, you have costs. You obviously have them. Do that and see how do we prepare? What do we do? How do we set expectations? And you have to pay people. Don't don't say I won't pay. Maybe six months you won't pay. But that's not a good idea. People deserve it. You got to pay. Do that. Figure that out. I'm going to shift gears in a minute. Is this making sense to you guys here? Hmm? Now I go to the fourth part. What the corporations need to do. Now I have to confess to you. I learned all this at the age of ten on my shoe shop, and I had to pay fifty thousand dollars at the Harvard Business School. Very first day, I thought, what am I doing here? I learned here. So many, how many of you from UP area? Yeah. So in my days, which is 1955, in 55, I'm 16 years of age. 50, I am about 11 years of age. So I loved going to the shoe shop. They saw that early in me. <laughs> so do you understand the word karao? Everybody understand Karao? So in our Mohalla, hmm, Mohalla, these people come with white ropes and Karao, and they will gather us kids to teach what they call Vyavahar Ganit, trade arithmetic. Everybody got it? They pick up retailers, get the kids, round them up. They got some Dakshina, and they teach us just trade arithmetic. It's literally we have organized. That's what it is. And they will teach you what these big people do here after MBA from Harvard is what is margin? What is EBITDA? We invented the word EBITDA. They used the word cash. What is EBITDA? Cash. We were taught how to use cash. How to see the things with cash. How do you improve margin? And then they taught a new concept that which I will take you through. It's still in most countries, people don't practice it, except the world's largest population of CEOs, one man CEOs, one lady CEOs, and that is the street vendor. The street vendor is the largest population of general managers, single, single business. And the second largest population is the Pansari. Understand Pansari, Kirana Merchant, Corner Store? Yeah. They are. Family, run it, do that. So I want to take you through the concept of velocity that's applicable to the nation as well as to the companies. So in 1967, the dean of the business school, Howard Business School, called me up and he said, I want you to go to Managua, Nicaragua in the summer. No American wanted to go there. I was picked to go. President Kennedy had asked the people in Central America to establish a Harvard Business School offshoot. And so a wonderful classroom, great interpreters. I go in, Harvard professor coming in. They're preparing it. They spend dollars and they earn Cordoba, the local currency, eight to one ratio. So I've taught the class and they're very hardworking, no question. At the end of the class, a priest came in. He was in the class as a student. And he said, Professor, how do you like the class? I said, Maravilloso. Very good. Splendid. But, and the, the first, 
I said, nobody will employ them. Huh? Nobody will employ them. I am. I don't think so. Now, I remember Harvard carries an aura. He's a Harvard professor, young professor, 28 years of age. He had a great class, absolutely prepared, nice, and nobody will employ them. So he says, Por qué? Why? I said, they don't know how to make money. What do you think of that answer? They know strategy. They don't know how to make money. How critical that is in business. So, father said, what should we do? I said, let's go to the dean, Dean Cruz. Ernesto, I said, your people don't know how to make money. He said, that's true. He's an economist, by the way, PhD from Harvard. I said, well, let's go where the people make money. We take a bus, 20 students, two interpreters, and there is a bazaar about 100 times larger, all shops around there. It's a maternal society, all these shops, ladies running it, all these Kirana merchants, clothes merchants, all that. So I take my students, and the interpreter is, is continuous, 20, 20 kilometers, and we go to one shop, and one of my brilliant students asks, the lady, and she says, Senora, <clears throat> how do you make money? Because I've tuned the class. I said, we're going to have a field visit. And they thought I'd take them to a bank, to a big company. I said, no, where are we going to go? People have no videotapes, nothing. They, they, they make, make a living. So says, Senora, how do you make money? And she says, well, I buy for nine Cordoba, and I sell for 10 Cordoba, and I make DSA percentage. DSA percent margin, 10%. My student was saying 11%. I said, it's 10%. They calculate the wrong way. It's amazing. I take you anywhere in the village, they will calculate 10%. They know it. It's all there. And so my next student asked, he said, Senora, where do you get the money from? She said, from the chart. Hmm. What interest do you pay? 2% per month. My brilliant student says, Professor, 24% per annum. And lady looks at me. Now she knows I'm a power figure. She says, Senor, Professor, Senor has falta. He's wrong. Now the whole class looking at me, whose side do I take? Mm -hmm. Now remember, I have learned to trade arithmetic. Mm -hmm. That's why I tell him, she's right, you're wrong. The number is 32. Uh, professor, how come I lost the both students? <laughs> so my third student says, Senora, how do you earn 32%? She said, no, 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 I've got to make a living. I earn 50%. Think about that, the mindset. She, a sharp, quick. Now, I have no problem because the translation is going on at the same time. So she says, DSA percentage margin, margin, and five times the rotation of inventory. My velocity is five. So a street vendor, when the bananas begin to rot, they cut price. Unlike General Motors, where you take a whole floor of risk calls and have one week meeting to cut the price. It is. It will have excess inventories here. Did they not? Good. This velocity concept is a big concept for companies that how do you have this rotation of capital faster? And that is the return on investment is margin multiplied by velocity. And it is here you learn all the details of the business. Obviously, I taught that and did all that going forward. Any business you're running, I got to pay attention to it. Now, if you are influencing an industry, for example, I'll, I'll go with you on the line. 
when I sit on the other side of the table in America, what are the most critical infrastructure industry in any nation? What are these industries? Power, steel, Yeah. Infrastructure. Telecom. Telecom. Airlines. Roads. Ports. If they are lousy, don't worry about the rest of it. Clear? Now, is telecom earning the cost of capital? No. And there are no signs that it will. Airline industry, is it earning cost of capital? No. There are no signs of it earning it. People ask me at their table on the board from, we have the data, they don't earn cost of capital and they're regulated. What's wrong with the government? We're not gonna invest the money. I've talked to the people in Verizon, we don't want to come to India, no way. Because you can't manage it. Huge investments, by the way. Velocity is poor. Pricing is poor. Lots of investment. So here, coming what the companies need to do is the first thing is run by cash, not by earnings per share. Cash is king. Where is it coming? Where is it going? Know the details. So I have a very large company I'm working with here in India. There are a lot of businesses. I see their annual report. I'm not kidding that that's it. Data I'm talking. And I'm saying, I like to know who reads it. And then I say to them, it takes a genius to read the numbers. It does. I just spent for one company the whole day reading it. Simplify it. So people get it. Show them, learn them. It's not a rocket science. If you convert everything to cash out of balance sheet, cash flows, and profit and loss, you will get the whole thing in one page. Just stay with the cash. You will do that. Second is the cash traps in inflation. That's where I'm going. Cash traps are receivables and inventories. I have a company in here in India where there are 270 days of receivables. The government, now they're creating a legislation to take care of it. Do that, figure this out. Third, you got to allocate money to do innovation now. Don't get caught, I will do it tomorrow. It's an innovation economy, take the pain, do the products, et cetera, whatever it is. And productivity continually is a must. But we got to do the return on capital. You will be flooded with the FDI. No question about that. They want to do, you want to come, figure that out. And then all that, if you believe, this is your belief, not mine, I have a belief too, that inflation is here to stay. We got to learn how to do pricing. Some do very well, some don't do very well. And see what kind of a business models you're going to have. That's my simple take, it's all detailed in the book, you can do that. I lived through it, 1970s, 80s. In 1980s, I was called in by the GE to prepare a program on inflation for 1,000 executives. And we coined the program called COIN, Coping with Inflation, trained 1,000 executives, generated cash out of the company, everything then taken care of from there, do that. Lived in Brazil, where you go and get your bread before noon. I'm not kidding, get your bread before noon. Price will increase. And they take money in a wheelbarrow. That, that's very, very difficult. We don't want that. It will erode the psychology of our people as we, as we go forward. Last part is budgeting. As the companies are doing budgeting starting April 1, right? That's normally the, the start.
start of the year. And in that year, budgeting being done now, just give you three items to think about. One, create a spare fund to be used. And that is agility. That's hard, observable thing. So you can place bets or extract out. Clear? Second, I have no doubt the currency volatility will remain. It's not changing. Bad or worse, that's a separate issue. And here, we will see the change in some company a strategy to place this person is better for this sales force than that person is better on this sales force. And we're going to shift people. And they are, this can get a better arrangement with the customers than this person. Could I call adaptability? Clear? Planning on your budgeting? Please louder. Uh, just, uh, putting the right person at right place. Yeah, but I'm now coming to the conclusion. I did my plan in March. I'm now in October, and I see this big shift. I'm going to move somebody from here to there. I being the leader, obviously. Or if you're sales manager, I'm going to move this person from here to there. And this is adaptability organizationally. Because I think this person is better to deal with it than this person. That's agility and that's adaptability. And now alignment, uh, I see this in sports. And that is cricket, do they do they do they rehearse? They do. They practice the hell out. I believe they have coaches. It's a serious game. It's a very serious game here in India. Same thing in football, in sports. Very serious game. They do rehearsal. I'd like to say they do practice. I call it rehearsal. So to align, I know of no better way than do rehearsals. Your goal is this for 2023. We're going to get the team to work at it. You give them the data and say, under this scenario, what would you do? Under this scenario, what would you do? Under that scenario, what we will do? Which one will be agile, which will be adaptable? And now we align ourselves. So when the conditions come, we can move faster. Do this qualitative budgeting. Then you do the numbers going forward. Make sense to the group here. So those are the items, are the leadership heft, the kinds of uncertainties. I did not pick up business cycle. You know how to do it. It's normal. Everybody knows it. Seasonal. I was 11 years of age. We knew exactly in the monsoon what we will not sell. We didn't have enough cash to buy a lot of things. When we didn't have enough cash, we did the velocity without knowing the velocity. My cousin brother used to go on Sunday night to Agra. Everybody knows Agra, Taj Mahal and come back on Tuesday, and we bought the shoes just for two weeks. Sold them, got the cash, go back again. We never called it velocity, but that's what velocity is. And in those days, we didn't have a Hindu shoe shop. They put it together. And within one year, in those days, would you believe that they had a sales of one lakh? Just think about that, in those days, 1949. Market was there. We didn't know a damn thing. But we knew a couple of things how to make money in it. So we, we, we go after that. And then we say, 2023, go out of here and talk to your people. It is the leaders who deal with the uncertainty. Have the confidence. There's a methodology of doing it. We brought that out earlier. And we're going to make mistakes. We're going to correct that. But if you do the practicing and rehearsal, it's easier to correct the mistakes as you, as you go forward. 
And then we say what the corporations might do. And then we say what the budgeting you might do. And then think about the government side of it. We got to make a number of industries earn cost of capital. We can do that. It's not a big deal. We have enough controls, hence, in the government to do that. We will see more FDI coming in. And no country, I've, I've gone and press on this before several times, no country ever got built, including America, without FDI. We're doing better. It has to go better. I've been saying that we need to get minimum $200 billion a year FDI. We must get it. We can get it. People want to come here. It's clear. They just need to know certain things. Open that one up. The largest amount of FDI is now in America is about 250. China has that for years, about 200 going forward. And that is beginning to change. It's going to be very different going forward. We will see coalitions building, US, Japan, South Korea, Australia, India. And now I come to the last point that I didn't have prepared for it. I want to learn a lot. What I read now in the newspapers, I'm very impressed where Mr. Modi is going. What I read, I see his new approach, new to me, not necessarily for you. And that is, as India takes the presidency of the G20, he has coined a phrase, global south. That's going to be the underpinning. And that global south has clearly has a vision, which I don't know entirely. I'd love to learn, it'll come out, it'll be public. He's very open about these things. There, India will, will play a central role in the economic prosperity of the global south. That means a lot for us. One thing he has already announced that I picked up in the newspapers, and that is India will market infrastructure industries to the global south. I think this is beautiful. We can do that. The second thing I am saying, which are not in any way published, what is India's greatest resource? People. It's established. We don't have any debate on that. So we have it now, but we go gung-ho to create as many as research centers as we can create in India. My foreigners to come here. Styles, pharmaceuticals. They understand the, the quality of the people we have. And by doing that, think about the whole value chain. Doing product development and trials here will lead to manufacturing. That's where they're going to put it. They're going to train, they're going to invest, and they're going to build that manufacturing here. So I'm saying this is the greatest resource. And we have plenty of people we can deploy. I think we can. This idea of unemployable, I hear it. But I also know when I interact with some of these people, if you can train them for two months in real life, it is the same people who shine. Many of us couldn't make it here, made it out there. We did. They were unemployable. So we said, take this thing out. I want to eliminate the word unemployable altogether. And two months is more than enough to get there. So one day, without naming the company, uh, I, I used to go to the board. I was instrumental in splitting it from a large company. So that's why I went to the board. Indian company, 
in America, headquartered. On the board, except for one Indian, they're all Americans. Came from IBM and other very distinguished people. And one day the chairman, who was an Indian, said we can't recruit people, and so on and so on. So one of these American board members is what I would call crusty. Everybody understand the word crusty? Straight in. Polite in the boardroom, but don't mistake, the guy goes like this. As he opened his mouth, everybody knows who he is, what he does, how he behaves, I'm new. And he asked the chairman, he said, just take us through, how do you, how do you recruit him? And so he says, we have a telephone interview. And that on the telephone, you see how well he speaks English. Well, that was the wrong thing to say. And this man, polite, but he's like a hot knife in the butter. Are you testing for talent or for English? I think we can train people in English, could we not? Could we not? That's what we do. My English was terrible. And they asked me to teach at Harvard Business School. I didn't apply. I was called in. The job is yours if you want to. And the dean of the Ahmedabad was there. He said, you come to India. The dean said, no, you stay here. I will speak with a thousand miles an hour speech. He said, who the hell will understand you? Well, that got cleared up in the first week of teaching. People will do that. So our greatest resource is us. Other people don't have that. They have population, but they don't have the skills we have. And we can market that. And the, the, the last point that I've come to the conclusion, our total export of services this year has been 256 billion. I've challenged the right person and say, use me any way you want. I want to go for a trillion. We do not have in services competition from China. We don't. They can't do what we can. They don't have it. Why don't they have a target of one trillion? The market is zillion trillions of services. 80% of American consumption is services. You can argue 60%, that's okay. So how are we streamlining to the world demand? Even the Chinese want their service to go after. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to open to the questions here. If you'd like to take a five minute break, I'm very open to do that. Um, what we call the, the bio break. Would you take a five minute break? Let's take a five minute break and then we, we continue. Very good, okay. So what I'd like you to uh, make a request, just take two minutes to talk to each other, neighbors, and see what questions come to your mind, okay? Talk to each other, just talk to neighbor, get to know each other, and see what questions come to your mind, okay? Do that. All questions, no questions are barred. There will be questions I cannot answer, I'll tell you straight that I cannot answer it, that's the way it is, and I'll learn from your questions. Yeah, talk to each other, get to know each other. Yeah, it's good to talk to each other. Do some brainstorming. I'm <laughs> 
Okay, have some questions here. Who's going to help me? Give us some questions. Please help us. Have a microphone or something here? No. Yeah. Yeah. kind of burn burn the i would rather i mean my language i would like to say we should be burning money over there like a startup so when a age old company which is in its, in its own uh, life cycle with respect to its own uh, you know business cycle which is slightly differentiated and need to burn its own cash on something very new how should be a balance to be yeah i want to, to state the question if i'm not doing justice right, come right back because i think the question is solid to figure this out. Uh, first, is that a company that is coming of age and need to do something new and put cash there? Is that correct? And it's a government company, sir. It's a government company. And it is a government company. Whichever, whichever yeah. it is, yeah. see the way I would look at it, I could be wrong. It has to be a healthy company. Yeah. That's the purpose. Purpose is government funds are not funds for separate issue, but it's yes. So the first thing I want you to know, you know, this week I'm entering the age of 84. So I get to see a lot in the world and very confidential ones of some of the bigger shots in the world. We know when a company dies, in most cases, it's because of the leader of the company. One or more consecutive ones. I can even predict that which one will die. You can too, nothing about me. But your question is, we need to go into this new area, how do we allocate cash? I think that's your question. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So first thing is that, and I'm sitting on a board where we make making that decision now, right here in India. And so the first thing is that, <clears throat> what do you know about hydrogen? When I probe the guy in three minutes is over, lack of knowledge, I'm not going to fund it. PowerPoint is not enough. I will challenge any one of you in hydrogen what is the most critical thing? This is something I pro as a board member in a nice way. <laughs> because you can make a fool of somebody in no time. What's the problem in hydrogen? What you need to control? I'm sorry, sir. Storage and transportation. A plus. What do you know about it? Where have you found out who does it? Where is the profitability? Which companies are there? Call me up, I'll take you there. It's not hydrogen per se. It's not the production of hydrogen. It is the transportation. It is the logistics. So we say, you got to study it first. You got to say there are companies that are today have the pipe that can do that. And it's operational. Go and see it. You don't have to invest the money in it. And then when you're ready, you could do that. So we have a joint venture with AOL, IOL, IOL, IOC, IOC, LNT, and you know. And we're going to be looking is the transportation side of it. 
Yes, you're going to go to Egypt, which we are. There's one, Morocco, in Kazakhstan. There's going to be plenty of it. Now, if you want to own it, it's your choice. But the mastery of cost and delivery and transportation is what it is. And you start with the idea, I'm broke. Then the resources come here. So how do we go to these companies that are already operating and use them as our sourcing company? And there are some, so I go that way. Assume you want to invest. So I go to your question now. If the question is valid, I just change the parameters. I said, we want to do that. So then you're going to put a, a clarity of what's your mission, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to say, at what pace I want to grow and what cash is needed. Now, if the government will allow you, I don't know that, could you create joint ventures? <clears throat> I don't have idea. There's nothing wrong in the government having a joint venture. So you get the cash coming in, plus technology coming in, plus business acumen coming in. Pull that together. But you're not at a stage yet to make major investment in this technology yet. Now, if you're going to shield the nation against it, the calamity, it's a very important question from you that to, 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 to shield against major things coming in, then you've got to make a plan that this is the investment we've got to make for national purposes. And there will be largely an infrastructure going forward. So there are locations like in Mandara in Adani, and uh, Total is investing money in it. Others are going to come in in it here. I say, what's going on? I say, which way you want to go? So different purpose, I give you a different answer. I will define what the purpose is. But as uh, uh, Sir Mahapatra uh, said, it is in the transportation. So, sir, I just want to mention to you, uh, Dissault in, in Netherlands has now prepared the blueprint for a vehicle vertical takeoff that will travel 175 miles an hour. There is a small company in Mumbai, Mr. Tata is an investor in it, and uh, they has begun to think about how to fabricate such a vehicle. They now transport diesel online basis. And they now got the people they showed me about two weeks ago to think about transporting how to it would take a longer time. You don't get men like Mr. Tata to go to anything. And you, you know what I'm talking about, you say. He believes in it and so on and so on. And he figured this out. Okay. So my point was that it's a central question what you're raising, which is the resource allocation. And you define your objective going that way. But study a lot of it. it's in the early stages. Okay, let's take another question. It's a very good question there. Please help us. Oh, okay. Please help us. A uh, few years back, uh, uh, it was in the news, it's a big uh, uh, company from South Korea, that is POSCO. They wanted to invest, uh, and that was touted as uh, the biggest FDI in India. They had selected Odisha, is a state in the eastern part of the country, to uh, come with that investment. But it failed. So my take is leadership, if that is a question, we have a very brilliant uh, chief minister there, political leadership. And POSCO is one of the biggest uh, steel companies of the world. Why it failed and if at all it has to come again, what are the things that we need to... Okay. See, the first one I couldn't answer. I have no idea why they failed. I can give you a hypothesis why companies fail in execution. I can give that, but I don't know exactly what happened. And the first thing is that... <clears throat> Oh, one of the things is that the is it partnership or is it alone? 
okay, alone from South Korea, Moscow guys, okay. Second, do they need to learn the culture of the place in a broader sense? Not a PowerPoint to their training. Culture matters. You know what I'm talking about. And you've got to immerse yourself. And so I like Adi Godrej's idea. He wanted to go to Vietnam. And uh, as I understand it, he decided quite ahead of time I want to go to Vietnam, not the 11th hour. And it recruited people from Vietnam to come and live here. And I thought it was brilliant, but yeah. you may disagree with it. I think he's a successful leader. That's me. They gotta learn the culture. So I have a company in America, big pharmaceutical, wants to come here. My first question is who's going to run it here? I want to meet him. How sensitive is he about the culture? Good news, we speak English. <laughs> but that's not enough that you know English. Great question. Okay, let's take another one. Very good. Yeah, help us. <coughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, uh, sir, you talked about how people are the biggest resource in India, and we talk always talk about demographic dividend that India has. So, uh, can you tell me a few points that uh, we as academicians can help our students to develop these leadership skills so that we can capitalize on this demographic dividend and produce world-class leaders? See, if I got your question right, I believe our population is young. Yeah. I think it's the good news. Yeah. And so we say young population for a number of years. And how we have the education development and deployment of that demographic. Okay? That's why I'm translating your question, because then I'm be able to quantify it. Go at it. So I be, need to peel the onion further. In this age group first, I want to look at it. I pick arbitrarily last five years. It could be three. And then say, which Some segments of this population are gainfully employed, and which ones are not, by geography, by industry, or whatever. Just the way I do for businesses, I need to drill in all the way. And I need to find out where the gaps are. I believe there are gaps. I need to take care of it first. Because not being employed is losing dignity. People, in most cases I know, invested their parents' money and parents lived in a very difficult way. You know what I'm talking about? We know in our culture, parents will do almost any sacrifice for the children. You know that. So I need to start turning the wheel positively for those who are sitting at home. That's where I want to build the capacity. So one of the things I'm finding here, which I have not completed, we do a good job of skilling people. But when I meet the people who are doing this job, they don't show me the demand location. <clears throat> If they have it, that's good news. 
but you got to start with the creation of demand and the demand location and then do the skilling so they get the job after they get the skilling. Even if it is not 100%, but at least they get the dignity and that spreads out. And if I employ one person in India, I think three more will benefit. You know what I mean, four, three. So that's the way I would go. And then I would create competition among the states. It's the vote getting also. Make sense? But we've got to start somewhere. And I have no idea you do it in one state, others will want it. I have no problem saying that at all. It's, it's political, it's voting, it's dignified. You do that. Let's take another one. Yes, go help us, please. Yes, please. Good evening, sir. Namaskar. Uh, sir, this um, cost of capital and the consistency of government policies play an important role in any growth of any industry. But we, uh, as India is third uh, emerging, I mean, fastest growing economy, but if we see the data, then more than a million people left the country in the last decade. So how this growth will achieve? Third, uh, five trillion, three trillion, but we are talking. No, sorry, you know, I, I uh, slowly. Okay, <laughs> help, help me. Right? Uh, I do uh, want to. Yeah, I will repeat. Uh, sir, this um, uh, two major factors for an industry growth are cost of capital mm -hmm. and consistency of government policies, mm -hmm. like the foreign trade policy, taxation, financing. But this India is the third emerging or fast growing economy of the yeah, world. It is. But on the other side, more than a million people have left the country in yes. decade, eight yes. years. Yes. Then how things will match in the coming uh, years, five or ten years? Okay, now, see if I got your question right now, it's not come back at me. Right. Um, first, I want you to know that I am in the camp. It's a personal thing. People should have liberty wherever they want to work. I'm not going to stop that. You know what I mean? Do that. Now, when I go inside the company, I'm able to show them they have people buried, lift them up. I've got some of the biggest companies in India that I'm looking at. Give them a chance. Rise to the challenge. We don't lack inherent talent, raw talent. So when I look at people in Birlas and Adani's and Amani's, many of the people at the top never had degrees. And I'll tell you their qualities and their raw talent. And their raw talent is getting things done. clear. Some do a better job, some don't do at all. So there are people in the middle layers, layers who get things done, let's lift them. Clear? You have in the government too, who get things done. And there are many benefits in all that. The second characteristic of these people, they are magnets of talent to build teams. They build teams and the teams deliver results. Individual leaders cannot run big companies. And the third, if you put them into higher positions, they really know how to make money. And they don't use PowerPoint. They do it here. See, I spent days once with Mr. Villa. He's sitting here, I'm sitting for days looking at his businesses. He never used a computer or a calculator. You know what I'm talking about? It's all here. We can train them. Go at that. 
so my point, if I got your point, we have people here who will take charge, will do that. So yesterday, I saw three companies. These people struggled, and they built a company. One has the boats that are electrically charged. They're in three states. But telling the host, I said, why can't we take them national? They need money, and they don't have the skills to scale up. Another one is KP.com. And they built a something in a box for the agriculture. And they showed it's actually working. It's in the South. And I said, okay, they need help in scaling up. There's one I saw that is collecting waste and dealing with it. Then the South apartments, they got all the contracts, but they don't know how to scale up. They can teach that how to scale up. So we have plenty of those. We have more than 2,000 startups. Is that correct or not? Large number. We have icons. What we don't have a mechanism to teach them how to scale up. It has been pointed out to one of the largest industrialists in India yesterday that this is what we need to do. They get it. And then we can unleash a lot of there's a raw talent. I saw that with my own eyes. When the presentations were made, they were found. It's real. The boat company makes money, by the way. It does. Look how far they have to struggle to come to this stage. Now, they got help, I'm not denying. But they thought it, they found people to help them. There were some ministers who helped. <clears throat> so I go that way. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to keep you longer. I'm here for dinner. I'm a good punching bag. <laughs> Ask me questions I learned from you. I thank you for your valuable time. I hope you may have found one or two ideas you take home, particularly the heft of leadership and the art of making money. In the government, you still have to show you're deploying capital productively. Doesn't have to make money, but productively. But productivity is the key for the nation with the innovation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. On behalf of ASCII, I would like to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks. At the outset, I would like to thank Professor Ram. Sir, thank you for delivering such a wonderful talk on leadership during uncertain times. Your impeccable mention has always shown us the way, and we look forward to have you with us on more such events. Thank you. To our chief guest, Mr. Haven Thani, sir, for being such a source of inspiration for all of us. Thank you to our esteemed guest, Mohabatra, sir, and Patel, sir, for your unflinching support for this event. And of course, thanks are due to our Director General, sir, and Mr. Bose, sir, for taking such endeavors to make us come for such events so that we can get such wonderful insights and we can obviously carry them in our uh, professional and personal journey. And finally, thanks to all the participants for being here with us. With this word of thanks, I close this program and invite you all for the dinner on the first floor. Also, please collect your autograph book of Sir uh, along with um, the pocket diary. So thank you so much. <laughs>